Hello and welcome back to another video in the world of Monster Hunter Iceborne and Lance. One of my more interesting weapons that I like to use on very rare occasions simply because it's not just all about the poke poke poke, there's a lot of almost strategy that goes in and I would argue it's probably one of the best if not safest solo melee weapons to use. Um, I won't lie, using it in multiplayer is near enough pure cancer because all of your counter guards, all it takes is for another player to uh, hit them and uh, yeah, away you go, have fun. Kind of gets annoying after a while. So, Lance build progressions and I've put so much more time into trying these and testing them all out and seeing how they all work, so I'm hoping this helps a lot of people out. Now a lot of it is all going to be based on how much RNG you've got because one of the main things you're going to, going to need to get is tenderizer slash vitalities for example, critical slash vitalities again example, critical slash something, tenderizer slash something but the main ones are going to be guardian slash expert and guardian slash attack, guardian slash handicraft. Guardian is a new type of decoration that has been brought out in the Iceborne expansion. It's basically a perfectly timed block, such as that you can do with a Lance or Charge Blade most effectively, will give you a damage buff. It is a very good damage buff and it allows for very, very powerful skills utilising shields and blocking, which then means you can effectively punish the monster for attacking you. Now these are going to be rare and seldom, I do not know if they even remotely drop in high rank, I've not played high rank since Iceborn came out so I can't comment on that. So if you are playing through high rank and you've got a few, congrats, uh, potentially let me know, that would be great. And basically let's get started and look at some of these builds. Now at first we are going to be using the Garandara 2, you can potentially use the Cool Turoff Claw, Lance, Claw Lance thing which will have slightly higher raw uh, Kaiser three piece helmet, gloves and greaves, the Gamma variant at least, just to get maximum critical eye as well as Master's Touch and we're using Master Rank Rathalos chest and Baroth coil, please do ignore my cat, he wants all of the attention, he's such, such a poor lonely cat, such a hard life and we're basically going to optimise as much damage in there as possible and there are two level 4 decoration slots left feel free to put in there what you wish maybe another two challenge up, bit of health it's entirely up to you one that I would genuinely recommend is put a shield jewel 2 in there because as you progress there's going to be a lot of monsters that have attacks that you can't block unless you've got the guard up skill now sadly there's not too much we can do to help try and save sharpness until we get to Nagakuga unless you want to spam out a load of optionals to get the razor sharp spare shot charm in which case that will also help and offers a different set of build varieties but that takes a little bit longer to get and a little bit more dedication for farming and I don't know about any of you but I was very impatient going through Iceborne and waited all of it, all of it now. So the next set is basically relying on the Nagakuga as you can see here. This has slightly more effective rule, but not really by much. All of the tenderizer slash vitality, critical slash vitality, protection, blah, 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 they're in there as placeholders. What you want is tenderizer, whatever you're comfortable with, critical, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, vitality is going to be a good one, simply because monsters do hit quite hard and at the moment we're not at the point of where we can do a maximum or large amount of damage. I am using the Odegaran line at this point because some of the best lances in the game you can't get unless you spam out Arena, which is going to be challenging, especially at Master Rank, without the experience of the monsters or they're going to need to be you required to be Master Rank 24 for one of them, the Rajang Lance, or Master Rank 100 for the Ruiner Nogagante. So Odegaran is probably the quickest, easiest, and best tree line you can use to get through with a decent amount of damage while not sacrificing too much time, energy, as well as resources to get a decent Lance. 
So at this point, you should be roughly halfway through the story. Um, the gloves are going to be end of the story, but Kirin Alpha Chest, you can certainly get about halfway through at Master Rank 17. For the Shara gloves, spoiler alert, that's the end boss of the story. This enables you to effectively mess around a little bit more because you'll have Crit Boost 2 and Critical Eye 3 off from the bat. Don't forget to keep upgrading your Iron Side Charm as you go because a lot of the Iceborne monsters will hit so hard that you will get instantly knocked back regardless. Kind of disappointing the fact that we're still having to use Naga Cougar at this point. However, if you do want to transition straight into Kaiser, once you're Master Rank 17, you can. Just be warned, he does hit very hard, has a few new moves, and he tends to ruin your day. So I would suggest slightly building to this. The Shard Gloves are good for other poverty builds as well, and the Kirin Alpha Chest is used in a variety of other high-end builds. So it's going to be worthwhile getting them regardless. And it... It will just make your farming so much easier because you will just do a tad much more damage. Now, once you've got Kaiser, you can go for something a bit more like this. This actually offers some pretty hefty damage going. Like I said, we're also utilizing Guardian as well at this point to get some offensive guard going. Master's Touch is back, but we're still utilizing the Kirin Alpha and the Shara Ishvala gloves simply to try and keep your critical eye and critical boost up. Latent Power is quite handy as well reduces the stamina consumption the more damage you take basically which is helpful for those people that like to dash around like lunatics overall though this is still a more of a guiding lands progression build as it were not completely end game now for this next build i actually genuinely don't recommend making this i'm just putting it there to just sort of show the difference in the gap between the lances so this is as high a damage as I can figure to get the Odegaran Misery 2. This is the maxed out Odegaran Lance, the previous meta Lance. 704 effective roll. And this thing has 813. The laugh of it is they're pretty much the exact same build. All this has changed is the weapon itself. It's added an Elementless and rather than two Guardian attacks, I've now got two Guardian Handicraft. That is it. That's all that's changed in the build. So, Rajang Helmet, Guardian Handicraft with Attack, Kaiser Mail with Challenger 4, Attack, Attack, Kaiser Van Brace with Challenger 4, Challenger, Kaiser Coil with Guardian Handicraft, Critical, Attack, Garuga Grease with Guardian, Attack, Critical, Critical, the weapon itself, the Royal Grace Pike, you will need to do Arena to upgrade this. It's got an Affinity, Health Augment, and an Elementless Decoration. Mantles are going to be entirely up to you. I quite like using impact because it just helps break the fight up a little bit when you get those KOs. I do find Lance struggles a bit with KOs and stuns and trips, particularly in Master Rank. I find the impact mantle helps out a lot. But in the meantime, I hope this, this helps you out a lot and I hope to see you again pretty darn soon. Good luck, have fun and don't die. It's bad for the health.